I think a lot of times people can have uh, misconceptions, stereotypes, stigmas, whatever you want to call it, about collaboration. Maybe that's not even the proper term for it. Uh, maybe a collective um, outsourcing partners. Uh, but basically, we want to talk about better together and just the value of having a network of experts, of partners yeah. in your back pocket as you're running your business in the trade show industry. And so we'll define that a little bit more, but uh, really want to get to that value at the end of the day. So let's just talk about what is a collective, a outsourcing partner? What is, let's define that for our audience. So it's, I, I think this is a fantastic topic. By the way, the one of the reasons I put this on our list, our agenda is I am off to next month. I'll be over in Malaga, Spain at the IFAS uh, World Summit, which IFAS, for those that don't know, I think most do, it's kind of the international European uh, version of uh, the EDPA, Experiential Design and Producers Association. But their, their theme is really community and collaboration, much more than us. They, they call networking and partnering up with other companies, um, co you know, collaboration. And if you think about it, um, you know, you take a, 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 ch a third of the U.S., and that's the equivalent of 13 countries over in Europe. So they're all collaborating with international partners regularly, whereas we just, you know, might pack up a project for in, in, uh, you know, San Francisco and ship it to Las Vegas or, or, or to Denver. And, uh, that could be a three or four country journey over there. So, um, they much more than us, they've, they've learned to rely on their partnerships there. Um, mm -hmm. you and I were talking at the break, you know, that used to be known as outsourcing here in the States, <laughs> which I think a lot of people have a negative connotation about that. You, yeah. you don't want to admit that you've outsourced or you don't want to tell your customer that maybe you're outsourcing that work. We've all done it. If you don't produce your own graphics in-house, you're outsourcing your graphics and you have a graphics partner. Um, very few own their own trucks and do their own transportation or freight, right? So you've had partners uh, to do that. Um, same with furniture and with AV. Uh, I think Khalil sense the re return, you know, and build back after pandemic. I think it's become much more of a strategic business model decision that you're going to, you know, we used to say, oh, we have a network that we can tap into. I think the word now that's being used is a collective. You develop your own collective and now it's become part of your planned business process to, yeah. um, to strategically outsource or to partner with a company, whether it's on part of a project or all of the project. There is no question in my mind, you know, and if you are in the business event space, um, the most valuable representative to the brand is the one that's their partner on the strategic and the creative part, right? And if, but so if, if whether it's an agency or an exhibit house, um, you know, we're seeing more decisions that are being made to help the client spend their budget intelligently. And if that means, hey, man, I'm going to have, you know, Griffin's company build something for us in Vegas rather than ship it from Buffalo, New York, or, you know, from Charlotte, North Carolina, because the round trip freight costs are so insane right now, it's going to, it's going to completely eat up the client's budget. So, I think some sometimes, Khalil, there's an economic reason that that's uh, happening. And you go, well, is it weird to be partnering or collaborating yeah. with what somebody might say is a competitor or an alternative source for the brand? Look, there's so many moving march, parts and pieces in our industry and on every project. The variables are, in some cases, countless. Right. All of them have to work for success to, to be present in a project. And so what I found is very few companies, if we're honest, actually fulfill everything. Everybody's got, well, you know, partners or collaboration. So this is just, I think this, the conversation is great because this is, this is more than just a small piece or occasionally doing it. Now we're seeing collaboration happen for strategic business reasons. Yeah. Well, Are you, I think you, you see yeah. this, you see any of that? 
Oh, all the time. And I, I think it's one of the most valuable things whenever I think of outsourcing or having those partners uh, that are in your network, work with you on the projects that you need them on. It allows, one, it allows you to focus on what you're best at. It also allows the partner to focus on what they're best at. And you can really yes. leverage strengths whenever you collaborate in that sense. So focus is is one of the most important aspects of the work that we do. If you can't focus, then you get lost in the sauce and yeah. things can go through the cracks and go extremely wrong. So focus is, is invaluable and priceless. So that's one aspect of these partnerships is that it allows you to focus on what you can do best. The next thing is it provides a different level of ownership. Like we all have had employees that whenever we, you know, whenever things hit the fan, you're the one that's responsible. You have to take ownership for the mistakes that your employees make. But whenever you have a really valuable partner, if something goes wrong, they take an ownership that an employee doesn't always uh, have that same level of ownership. And so I think that's a really valuable aspect too. Whenever you have that freight partner and something goes wrong with the freight, it's not on you to have to fix that problem. Your partner understands that this was their responsibility and they take ownership of those problems. Um, also, if you do have to move on from that partner because they made a mistake, it's so much easier to move to another partner than it is to move from another employee. With an employee, now you've got to think about firing the employee and terminating him and what does that entail? But then also finding the new employee to replace oh, them. Getting them coached up them and on ramped the up and trained to Oh, your man. Even if they've got the skill set, they may not have your company mindset or fit in with and your And especially so, so, so if this area, like if freight is not your area of focus and now you've got to spend all this time focusing on it, yeah. like it's 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 a, a lot of waste going on. Lastly, we all know that labor costs continue to go up, but it's the biggest expense for us in business is labor costs. And this is one way of reducing your labor costs, especially for something that's not your area of focus. You can reduce the amount of money you're spending on labor while still getting maybe even a better product from somebody else. And if you're worried about, well, I, I want to be employing people, well, your partner is employing someone. Like yeah. <laughs> you get to support your partner and they get to employ people. So and anyways, the I, those are the cost, three things I think about. Well, and to your point, it's not just the rising cost of labor, it's the availability, which there's yeah. so many gaps on the availability on not just in our industry, certainly in our industry, but but in many others.